Hola, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Just uh, in this video, we had a call out. I'm not sure what the original call was for, but it's a uh, IntelliGen. So if you guys are having issues with that, this one, I don't know if it was recommended on the expansion valve, electronic expansion valve, or if uh, that's what they thought it was. So for you guys that are doing it's like anything. Is it ever the TXV? It's usually something else. So uh, electronic expansion valves, from what I'm told, are never really the issue. And I've actually been told by manufacturer to replace them only to find out that it still wouldn't uh, open or close, right? So it's usually a signal, which is from the board. So I've had issues where the board just stops sending the signal, works in test mode to do it, but when I do it in cooling mode, um, so if you're having issues with the e EEV opening or closing, it, it might be the board. So I've done videos on those. A lot of people still hit me up on that. So in this video, I just want to show a different problem with the uh, same issue, if that makes sense. Um, so what the, the electronic expansion valve was very loud on this unit. So, I don't know, maybe it's grinding inside. I have no idea how they work inside. Um, I've never heard it that loud. But initially, uh, it wasn't cooling, I assume. So, I would think it got stuck in whatever position it was in. And then when I got there today, uh, the breaker was off. We tried to turn it back on. It took me a while to get to the breaker to find it. And we turned, we had the indoor evaporator on before the condenser i was trying to look for the breakers on that so by the time i got the condenser back on the intelligent board wanted to do a pump down so at that point it did close the valve it did pump down so i was like i don't think you know the valve is bad right because that's what we went for but i went to go help verify and kind of help them uh troubleshoot it so to me, it was it was closing and it was open. So one way or another, you know, those things shut or stay open and it's usually a signal problem. So in this video, let me show you real quick, uh, checking a uh, heat craft intelligent, not cooling and then not, it didn't even want to come on. When I re reset the breaker, it did a pump down and I reset it a couple more times and it just did not, it said operation was off and never wanted to turn back on. So let me just show you real quick, uh, going through the board, the sensors, the controls and all that. And in the, in the board and the controller, when you get into the settings, you can see what your readings are. So you can see all your sensors, you can see your transducers, uh, what they're reading on pressure. I've already learned recently to verify, you know, hook up a, a probe and a clamp to that evaporator and make sure that you're getting the same reading that the board is getting. Because I already had one that came out of the box just not working and it was like 20 PSI off, which screwed up my whole uh, cooling once we got it on. So that was another issue in another video. And um, like I said, just verify that your readings are good. But in the settings, you can also see like, where it is in the steps. And then from there I would, you know, if it's closed, it's gonna be a zero out of 255. You know, are you pumped down as it opens? Are you getting pressure coming through? Um, so on and so forth. So you can go into the board and kind of get all your readings, but you gotta make sure you verify and double check that those readings are even correct, right? So hook up, do your checks too. And um, yeah, just, you know, another, Heads up on Intelligent.
All right, so it's technically working. We have um, 40 degrees and dropping. I had to add a little bit uh, refrigerant. So uh, technically, I guess the EEV got recommended and one of our guys was gonna change it out. I came and he mentioned that the sensor was, I don't know, it looked like almost burnt. I've seen them when they give out like that, I've seen two different styles. I've seen that, you know, enclosed little sensor with the with the rubber or whatever little end it has. And then I've seen the other ones that are mounted on the the metal plate. And those end up black too. And they're like a metal, like a silver uh, color. So I don't know what, what causes that. But essentially, you know, they give out and you got to replace the sensor. So... The EEV does sound really loud, so it might need it at some point. They went ahead and ordered everything. I was like, look, I'm just going to, you know, because this is the same customer that I've, you know, had issues with where it's like, why, you know, if I run up, especially right now, if I run up a high bill, they're going to get a second opinion. And it still blows my mind because they're going to end up paying more with another company because we are in the middle. And from what I heard, the other company is not even, you know, a cheap one, but he might, you know, that company might be able to fix something instead of replacing, you know, like a bunch of valves and, you know, like this one, it wouldn't have needed the valve. It, it like I said, it sounds loud, but it doesn't need it. So if somebody came behind us, and would have been like, oh, it's just a sensor, you know, it, the valve, the valve is fine. Then it would have made us look bad. So at this point, I'm just trying to fix things as they come. This customer has already made it known that they just want it fixed and uh, don't care what happens to it, basically. So I told my guy, let's just replace the sensor. Uh, let's get the charge right because he was already starting to recover it. And uh, he thought the refrigerant was contaminated. The thing is... This is not our install. I will show a picture because we were a little bit confused. It's going to start raining really bad. Um, we were confused because I was like, I don't remember an IntelliGen being here, right? They're all um, just your basic Russell uh, walk-in boxes, like the older styles. And this one had an IntelliGen. And I was like, I don't remember. So I was like pretty uh, adamant. And I went through my pictures. And sure enough, we did an install December 2019 it is you know mid 2024 so not even five years ago um you know that would make it like what four and a half years we put in a mechanical with the txv and all that we put in a new system for them less you know four and a half years later i come to help and work on it i haven't been troubleshooting it but i came i came today to help on it and it, there's an intelligence. So it's had two units in the past four years, which uh, kind of blows my mind. I did mention to them during that install about the gap on the door. So if you guys see, there's a gap at the bottom because I was like, look, this, this system had to have been put in recently, right? Like at the most, I would have, I would think it's like two years old. I need to look at the model number and see if I can um, see when it was put in. But I don't know if I can check all that, but um, anyway, uh, it was put in recently and it's already full of mold and, and different things. And I was like, look, the guy's out right outside because this is right outside the fryers and stuff uh, or right next to it. When they clean, there's always a lot of oil on the floor. When they clean, they just throw water, they throw cleaner, they scrub and then they hose it down and throw more water. And they do try to go into the walk-in box to bring to squeegee that out, but that huge ass gap, you're just getting a ton of water in there and that's where your mold is coming from, right? So we're gonna see if we can uh, get them to get us out here again to do something to seal the door. Um, like I said, I've recommended like two other doors and they're having a fit and I think they want that other guy to try and uh, kind of salvage cr like cracked doors that are falling off. So. If I recommend a door, they're not going to want it. So we're going to try and just patch it with a, a sweep or something just to help it a little bit. 
Yeah, but there's they're still gonna get water in there, and they're, they're not gonna. I think my guy said, yeah, I mentioned it mentioned it to them, and they said whatever, it's fine. Like they're just you know squeeze it out, but that's not the issue. The issue is the mold, right? So sensor gave out on these. Um, it is a beacon. So that part number, I called tech support just in case. I'm like, is, is there anything I can do? Because I didn't know we had, you know, sensors for it. Uh, in the meantime, because I can go pick one up. Um, but the one, the part, the part house here closest uh, doesn't have it. I have to go out an hour to go get it. So I was like, oh, what can I do to get it by, right? So he's like, steal the green one, which is like the defrost. It's like the, I want to say it's like the coil temp or something. He's like, that's, that's basically your defrost uh, sensor or that's what it's for. So steal that one and then, you know, run it where the other one went. The blue one is your uh, suction line temperature sensor. He's like, steal that one and take the, the blue one out and use that one. In the meantime, it's just going to run on a default or backup um, type of defrost, right? And I was like, man, I know I've seen them. I, I usually keep one. I, I usually leave them in the box, but... Um, I don't know if the Intelligen ones come with it. And if they do, you know, somebody took it out because this one did not have it. And like I said, we didn't install this one. I tried to leave them in the box, but I knew like a long time ago because I didn't know better. I took one. Right. So I've always had one and I try to replace it if I need to. Lo and behold, it was in the back of the drawer. Right. And I was like, OK, I knew I had one a uh, different part number, but it might just be an older one because it was it ended in 02 and the new one is 04 so it fit it worked it took it it read it so i was able to put the white universal one or replacement in put the other one back where it belonged and just eliminated the the blue wire that was bad so on intelligen beacon um man i cannot remember the, the name of it because i've done a video on this where I, I used the, the spare that it had because they do give out um, Larkin. There you go, Larkin. They're all the same. Uh, same manufacturer, same all that. It's all heat craft. Uh, with those, you, you can use a spare or a universal or you can steal, uh, from what I know or from what he told me, the defrost or the green one uh, to get you by temporarily. So... Uh, on, on others like Russell, the Russell branded stuff, you can just remove or disconnect sensors and it'll, it'll do a fail safe. Um, or somebody called it a, a limp mode, right? So it'll get by. On these, you need to use a universal or steel one because the three sensors it has, one is your box temp sensor, which you need, so you can't take that one. The other one is the coil temp, which is, it deals with defrost. And then uh, the blue one is your section line temperature. So all three are the same. And if you see, if you see the, the bag on it, it'll tell you right there that it's for any of these sensors, right? So it replaces the blue, green, red, or yellow. They're all the same. So that's that. I'm gonna, I just did this video really quick for anybody that is still working on intelligent and having issues. Uh, pretty simple. So just keep in mind, I didn't even think about it, that Intelligent is also a beacon because the part number is a Beacon 2 controller sensor kit. So they're the same. I didn't know that. Um, helping out anybody that has issues because I still to this day get uh, comments and messages on issues that they run into on Intelligent. And I did those videos like years ago. So here's another one. Hopefully it helps. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. See you guys.